Welcome back to Our Issues in Milwaukee. I'm your host, Andrea Williams. If you're just joining us, I've been talking with Wisconsin's 44th Lieutenant Governor, Rebecca Clayfish. Welcome back to the show. Thank you. And uh, we've, like I said, had a chance to discuss the issues. And now I'd like to give our viewers at home an opportunity to know a little bit more about you as the mom, the wife, and the survivor. Uh, you're married with two kids, and you mentioned in the first segment that your husband, Joel, is also a politician. He's with the Wisconsin State assembly so uh, very interesting in itself but uh, for those who will remember you were a newscaster Once upon or, a time. I should say an anchor here at a local station in Milwaukee when did you realize that you were ready to kind of uh, go away from being a journalist but go into politics well there was a six-year period in between there a lot of people kind of lost track because why would they pay attention to a stay-at-home <laughs> mom right who had a small business but here's what happened um, it was right before that time when um, larger media conglomerates said, you know what, we ought to give women more flexibility and we ought to let them go part-time. And I think what I was asking for in, in going part-time was um, a little bit ahead of where the industry was at the time. Mm -hmm. And they were willing to negotiate with more money, which was terrific. Uh, but there was a point at which I decided on the great scale of life, um, I can't put time with my daughter on the same scale as a bigger paycheck. Yeah. So I thought, you know what, rather than try and, and weigh that, rather than try and figure out that balance, um, I'm just going to step away from the scale altogether. And I did. I, I left, and um, I left a, a large potential raise, uh, <laughs> But at the end of the day, it was worth it. And we had to sell our house. And we had to budget uh, in a way we had never experienced before. I couponed like I was on a reality <laughs> show, Andrea. <laughs> Um, and eventually it got to the point where um, I'm an artist, so I was selling my paintings. Mm -hmm. And we still weren't making ends meet. And that was really hard for me as the one who does the checkbook. I put us in this situation. I was the one who said, I want to quit my job. I want to sell the house. I want to try and do this. And now I was saying, I don't know how I'm going to be able to pay the mortgage. Gotcha. And so I decided to start my own company. And I worked as a media and marketing contractor, mostly during nap time, <laughs> for those years I was at home. And there comes a point at which, when you deal with companies large and small, and you are a small business owner, that you realize, gosh, government affects everything we do. Mm -hmm. You know, women make about 85% of consumer household decisions in America. Right. And what I tell women today is, what, if not a consumer household decision, is your vote, right? Politics, politicians, policymakers affect all of the things that touch your life. If you think about it, if there's a pothole outside your driveway that wrecks your front end or your back end, depending on how you drive <laughs> in your driveway every day, you know, that's politics, yeah. right? Yeah. It's a policymaker who decided whether that pothole got filled. Politics and policy affect all of these things. And I started to realize that as a mom and a wife that. If I feel this way, and if I understand that, then clearly other moms deserve a voice. I can represent those other moms, <laughs> and there's no reason why a regular mom can't go to Madison and can't take what she's learned and apply it to policy. Yeah. Because I think that women's voices are worthy, deserve to be heard, and deserve to be represented. And what makes you uh, really a special individual in my mind is that in August of 2012, hmm. 2010, you were diagnosed with colon cancer and you had a tumor removed 12 days before you actually won your primary election. And needless to say, that was a pretty tough time, but it really goes to show uh, how tough of a woman you are. And if you can handle that, I'm thinking you can handle just about anything. Kelly Clarkson had a song a few years ago, What Doesn't Kill You Makes You Stronger. Mm -hmm. The scriptural version of that is Romans 5.3. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings. For suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope. And hope does not disappoint. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of challenges in life, a lot of sufferings in life, can be viewed as opportunities to persevere, 
to build your character and to get your hope. Yeah. Because hope is never going to disappoint anybody. That's right? true. But with all of the things that you've gone through in surviving uh, colon cancer, you now spread awareness. And that's right. really important for you to get the word out to other people first to know that colon cancer is a preventative disease mm -hmm. and also to realize that, you know what, uh, we all have to pay attention to our health, pay attention to things that we sometimes blow off here and there. Yeah. And that's important for you to do that as well. It is important. I know that's kind of a bizarre place for a lieutenant governor to go around talking Not about her colon <laughs> and telling people go get go get your colonoscopy. <laughs> but um, it's important because colon cancer is the second leading cancer killer in America yeah. but it's preventable yeah I just said that the second biggest cancer killer in America is preventable oh my gosh how did we get there yeah. the other thing that's preventable is cervical cancer there are only two preventable cancers in America colon cancer and cervical cancer no excuses guys we need to make sure that we're getting screened and colon cancer is something that I encourage folks to get screened on every single day and you know that in our budget we have this well woman program mm -hmm. where we have money for for cervical cancer screenings and for man Mammograms, breast cancer screenings and so we need women regardless of their socioeconomic status regardless of how old or how young they are to think about their health because everybody has one a yep. health it can be good and a colon, and a colon <laughs> or it can be bad mm -hmm. but this is actually something that we get a little bit of choice in mm -hmm. you can treat your body well or you can treat it poorly if you treat it well and listen to it, it'll last longer and it will be healthier so you can enjoy life more. And I think everyone at the end of the day would just like to enjoy their life a little bit more. You know, have a little bit more time, have a little bit more of their own money to spend as opposed to giving it all to politicians <laughs> um, and, and have a little bit more prosperity, a little bit more breathing room. I think I was saying the, the day we met, our Declaration of Independence, our nation's birth certificate, gives us three free gifts, right? We get life, liberty, both of those are given by our Creator, mm -hmm. and the pursuit of happiness. That's right. And in government, we actually can be an agent of that last one. We can help if folks want to pursue their happiness. Well, that's a great way to wrap up today's show. Time flies when things are interesting, I tell you. Thank you so much for stopping by. Always a pleasure it's talking to you. my pleasure. You. Thanks, Andrea. Wisconsin's 44th Lieutenant Governor, Rebecca Clayfish. For more information on the issues and the initiatives that we've discussed, you can log on to LT gov.wi.gov and that's going to do it for today's show. I'm your host Andrea Williams as always. I thank you for watching and I hope you join us again next week as we take another look at our issues in Milwaukee. Have a great day.